Welcome back to another week of Midwest Whitetail. Today is November 15th. This morning I hunted down at the River Bottom Farm and uh, we had a little bit of action that first hour. It was rainy and super windy. We've had 50 mile per hour gusts today. We ended up seeing the uh, a mature 6x5 that we've seen a few times down at the River Bottom Farm this year and then nothing for the last few hours. So Chase and I have made the switch over to my home farm. We're sitting in a redneck blind over this corn plot, hoping for our Ali to show up. Last time you guys saw me, we were seeing multiple four plus year old bucks. It seemed like every hunt. Heavy seeking in that early rut phase. Lots of excitement every hunt it seemed. Some of the best hunting I've ever experienced. Since then, it's slowed down quite a bit. We're entering, or we have entered into this last week into the lockdown phase of the rut. Peak breeding here in Iowa is around November 15th, and so we've got a lot of does and estrus, and uh, that typically results in a lot less action, unless you can get a hot doe to come by your stand. I have a couple strategies I tend to use this time of year. My primary one is focusing on bedding areas. I always try to hang pretty tight to a bedding area. I had a great hunt last Wednesday on one of my permission farms doing that. Ended up having a hot doe come in right after daylight, bedding at about 80 yards. There was a four and a half year old 10 point uh, tending her and he chased off bucks all morning. We ended up seeing 10 bucks. And uh, the other advantage of hunting the bedding area is these mature bucks will cruise the downwind side of them looking for another doe when they're in between does. Also sticking with the strategy of just hunting pinches and funnels um, where cruising bucks might go. You know, it's less effective as in early November, but certainly these, these bucks will lock down for a few days on a doe and then they gotta move on to the next one. And if you can catch them between those, those funnels can be a hot spot. Last Wednesday, Jared also had a phenomenal hunt on our River Bottom farm. This was the day after that high pressure cold front came through, which was a big change after a previous week of high temperatures. He ended up encountering just about every buck on the farm, including Marino, our number one uh, target buck the last few years. He actually had two encounters with him. Uh, and unfortunately, Marino got away, but there was a hot doe bedded out in the wetland grass out in front of Jared, and she was being tended by one of our big four-year-olds, this uh, buck we call the Crab Claw 10. He actually watched Crab Claw uh, breed the doe, and Crab Claw fought off bucks all afternoon, and uh, there were multiple mature bucks uh, circling that doe and in that area. Those kinds of situations make for some phenomenal hunts. This time of year, it's more about investing time in, in the stand. You know, with these slow hunts, it's easy to get discouraged. Also, uh, trail cameras tend to really slow down this time of year. You know, the bucks aren't on their feet as much. They're not cruising. They're not working scrape lines and so cameras go just about dead might have been for the last week hardly taking any pictures except for when a buck will get in between those um you just can't get discouraged you just got to stick with it put your time in the stand and if you're there and in the right area and get a hot doe by it'll be one of the best hunts of the year jerry and i are going to stick after it and hopefully we can get one of our target bucks in front of us here pretty soon we have a couple great hunts for you guys this week on the show. First, we're gonna join Caleb Mason and Matt Tatey. Their hunt showcases how th quickly things can change for you here in November. And it's amazing they actually captured this hunt on film. After their hunt, we're gonna join Caleb Griner on a classic November rut hunt. Hope you guys enjoy the action. Today is November 11th, it's Veterans Day, and uh, we're just thankful for people that have served in our armed services, men and women, that uh, provided the freedoms that we have. So um, we are back in a, an area we we call the Big Timber. Yeah, we sat here once earlier this year and had encounters with two nice deer, basically 100 yards or 120 yards that way, and uh, this is the area that the big six died uh, shot the big six last year um, so we've moved to this end of the farm uh, Matt harvested a split g2 buck uh, a couple a couple nights ago or a couple mornings ago he kind of occupied the south end of the farm and then we have a couple other deer on this side of the farm that we're gonna target it's kind of a bedding area so we're hoping that they're gonna be circling circling this area temperatures have dropped 
30 so degrees in the last couple days the conditions are right but it's that time of year so um, hopefully we we can catch one cruising looking for a doe it seems like they kind of go around this lip uh, that we're that we're on so our scent's kind of blowing down into this little bowl we'll put in pretty much an all-day set today if we need to so um, Matt packed us a bunch of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches so we will we'll have energy to to punch it out if we need to today It's one o'clock here and uh, we are going to pull out of this stand and I think we're going to do is um, move that way. Um, we were just slightly out of the game this morning. We A lot of deer came back here but a lot of them hung up you know 80, 100 yards away so we're going to try to go that way. The deer that we're, we're after uh, took a doe in there. You know they could be out in that CRP uh, so he's kind of locked down on her. So we're going to see if we can press in and try to be careful uh, in, in the event that they're out in the thick CRP, they're bedded down or something. So I um, had a little bit of midday movement here, a couple small bucks um, cruising through the area. So definitely a good sign, but we'll take care of business and we'll get uh, set up in a new position for, for tonight. Yeah, let's go right here. I think we've got a clear shot in through here.
410. Caleb. <laughs> nice job, buddy. You got your mic on. I know. Could you hear me breathing heavily? Uh, I couldn't move. <laughs> oh my gosh. I could, he's, he's literally, he's 18 yards from us the whole time. Right there. There's just so much junk in the way. Can you believe that just happened? <laughs> <laughs> I th I got him. I got a ton of footage, dude. So. Oh my gosh, that was crazy. Well, I saw I saw her on the edge over here, and I looked up and I was like, "Oh, it's just a doe." And then I saw his body to the right of her, and I was like, "Oh, big buck, big buck!" <laughs> oh my gosh, I that was crazy. Nice job he wanted to stay downwind of her yeah dude i was like squeezing up next to this tree um you know the doe just came out over here there's a little bit of cover but um yeah i was basically squeezing as tight to that tree as i could and i was kind of inching around the side like this um, i was really watching her more than i was watching him because she was kind of out milling around and she was lifting her head and and he wasn't really paying attention to anything but her so, holy cow. And, I mean, he's only 15 yards away right here, but there's just too much, too much brush through there to try to squeeze a shot in. There's my arrow. Look at that brute. Awesome man. We're gonna we're gonna get a tag on this brute, um, get him cleaned up and drag him out to the, the lane about 30 yards over here and get some nice pictures of him. Couldn't be couldn't be happier. Um, definitely uh, not how I thought the story was gonna go today, but definitely excited that it uh, ended up this way. So thanks for watching Midwest Whitetail. All right, guys, November 13th, Friday the 13th, day seven of vacation. And with that being said, I've elected to come to the Prospect Farm. And if you guys can recall, this is a farm that Collins and I actually hunted earlier this year, in early October. And we had a lot of really good encounters with a few really good four-year-olds. In years past, Josh and Collins have both hunted with me at this spot. And that being said, there is a lot of does that use this CRP transition area. And the reason I call it a transition is because there's ag to the north. And most of these deer go out to feed in this ag, and then they either bed in these pine trees that are to my north on the property, or they'll file back all the way to the neighbors uh, to the south of me and bed over there. But what I'm hoping is... I'm either gonna catch a hot doe or one of these mature bucks just using this transition. I know there's a lot of good mature bucks in this area. I mean, I've been running cameras here since the summer and I'm actually doing a hanging hunt this morning as well. And uh, this is one of those stands just like Casey's hunt that once you get in the tree, you're gonna have deer all around you and it's basically impossible to do an interview. I'm gonna get packed up, I'm gonna get my camo on and get to walking.
Well, guys, I'm not really sure what to say about that one. I had deer all over me, as expected, like I was talking about. And all of a sudden, I heard a grunt back over my shoulder towards the north. And this buck was on a hot doe, it looked like, just sitting on this hill, probably 100 yards away. I was just hoping and praying that he was gonna come to this west side because I've got a straight west wind right now and if he would have came that wind it would have been done. I had to miss range because left and right I was perfect on that shot, I know I was. Got knocked another arrow and everything and I know the deer was still in frame and I hit the deer. I'm not sure, I'm gonna go down, look for my arrow and depending on if there's any blood or Anything on my arrow, I'm probably gonna go back home, give it three hours, look at the shot on the big screen, and I just, I'm, I'm not sure what happened. We'll get down, we'll look at the arrow, and uh, I'll bring it to you guys, but we'll see what happens. Well, all right, guys, it's about five hours after the shot, and uh, after I'd initially shot the deer, I, I called Josh, called Collins, and I was just talking about the shot and everything, and um, we all agreed that uh, the best, best idea was to go back home, review the footage. It looks like I tucked it in. He was quartering away, and it looks like I tucked it in right behind that front shoulder. You can also see he's pouring blood out um, in the timber, but he did run on the neighbors. I tried giving the neighbor a call, um, but I got no answer, so um, we're gonna have to leave the bow and everything back here, but. I'm just gonna pick up this blood trail. We've given him plenty of time, like I said, five hours. So, I mean, hopefully he's just laying on the other side of the fence, not too far, but let's check it out. Blood? Your arrow is in him. Huh? I saw your arrow. Still in him? Yeah, just standing there right now. Yeah, he fell over. He just fell over. He fell over. <laughs> Alright guys, well we're about two to three hundred yards into this track job and the blood was really good at first, but the one thing that Caleb and I noticed is that the arrow never came out of the deer. And like he had mentioned, we thought it was lodged in that offside shoulder. Caleb was on last blood on top of this hill. So I saw that there was a little cut path logging trail in the creek. So I wanted to see if I could cut it. I found a pool of blood and the buck jumped probably 40 yards across the creek. He jumped up out of his bed. I looked at Caleb, we both started watching him. And you said you thought you saw him go down. Yeah, I thought I saw him go down. I looked back at Hunter and Hunter reassured me. I mean, just the look on his face that the deer went down. We, so I think what we're gonna do is give it maybe like five more minutes. That deer should be expired by now. Yeah, well, the thing was, so we're standing, like I said, we haven't moved. He hasn't gotten back up, and the way he fell, he fell from his, you stand up, he fell on his left side. We that should have that. pushed that arrow yeah. right through him. Yeah, it should have. It really should have. So. <laughs> I mean, again, we, we think he's dead, but we're just trying to play it safe a couple more minutes. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> That's the craziest track job I've ever been on. What track job have you ever been on? I'm ready to go get my hands on it. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of mass. That's a cool deer. All right, guys. Well, we finally 
got up to the deer and got our hands on him and boy what a surprise I mean so much character with this deer but thank God for good friends like Josh Hunter Casey and Collins to give me advice and I mean just be there for me I mean Josh came Josh and Hunter came back from Illinois they were hunting in Illinois this morning and they drove back two and a half hours just to come help me track this deer boy what a roller coaster of emotions this week has been between cattle getting in to the timber and people walking into uh, my hunting area and been down in the dumps just because this week's been such a roller coaster but anyone that has hunted multiple days in the rut they know that I mean you're gonna have highs and you're gonna have lows but the grind always pays off and, I mean thank the Lord today it finally paid off with a beautiful beautiful buck and I couldn't be happier Congratulations to the guys on some great bucks. Tonight we've had a little bit of activity, but I think this uh, high winds have kept it pretty subdued. We've seen uh, some chasing back in the bedding area here, and we just had a familiar eight point. He's three or four years old. He came out of uh, the cedar thicket, and he's working his way down here right now. Keep in mind as we enter the second half of November that we're gonna have less and less available does as we exit the lockdown phase. That's gonna result in uh, more cruising by the mature bucks, looking for the last available doe, so it's a great time to be out and catch a mature buck on his feet. Uh, Jared and I are gonna keep after Dak and Marino on the river bottom farm, and then I've got great news on this farm. As I mentioned earlier, uh, I'm targeting Ali. I recently got a picture of him. I um, had not had a picture since October 7th, I believe, it was early October. In previous years, he had rutted elsewhere, and uh, so I'm not surprised that he's been gone, but it's good to see that he's alive. I got one single picture of him at 6.30 in the morning, and um, I'm expecting to be able to get on to him, hopefully, at post-rut on the food sources. So uh, I'll be scouting here, keep my cameras rolling, and if he makes, um, if he enters some of my food pots here in late November, I'll be uh, targeting him pretty hard. For those of you still out grinding, good luck. I hope you guys can tag your target buck. As always, we appreciate the support, and we'll see you guys next week.